I'll read one called Immigrants, which should explain to you why you've been listening to me talk with an accent. Um, okay. I, my, my original language was German and uh, but I have, I have spoken English for really uh, the majority of my life. For some reason, I've never been able to get rid of my accent. So here it is. And uh, the poem is called Immigrant. She curls her tongue around exotic sounds. She knows her yoni is not wrong. It simply is. Once more, this craving to belong to start from scratch, to fit. Once more the flutter of enigma on unshielded skin. When she was very small, things started feeling normal. Cruelty, huddling, a white Pomeranian terrorizing with sharp teeth from across the street. Her mother's back sagging under the weight of duty and embarrassment as preachers disparaged women from the pulpit. Soon she felt more like an alien, an inconvenience to her elders, a thing a busy stork had carried from far off and inadvertently dropped in the next best cradle. Facts later made her curious, but nobody wanted to discuss them. Feeling alien already felt quite normal anyway. Now in a new country and an unfamiliar language, at least she has a good excuse for feeling strange for kissing with an accent and not being loved the way she had imagined. Everything already effortlessly takes place without her. She tries to compete, but her hair always falls short of expectation. When others are awake, she acts as though she belongs. She has her doubts. She suspects, she suspects it is easier to get ready than it is to actually participate. Everybody seems to have a good idea of what love is. Nobody claims firsthand experience though. She intends to keep on looking. When she finds it, she will do her best to mark the path. Carefully, she chooses words she already knows. Very nice. And I'll read you another poem called Trapeze Artist. Again, about negotiating this somewhat um, challenging world. True peace artist. She didn't have the courage or the talent or the opportunity or trust that anyone would catch her. So she remained on the ground with all her sequent dreams, just as many of her neighbors do among the roses covered in snow that flows down sideways among the illustrated fairy tales, the chiffon wrapped desires. She notices in stories, no one ever bothers to revive the dragon. This worries her as junipers cast shadows on her eyes. She thinks of waterfalls she will likely never see, of music she might love, but may not get to hear, and always, of course, of the tempting trapeze. She does trust the forest with its secrets, shrubs, shadows, needles, leaves, its poetry of frost, where nobody is jealous and still everyone's destiny gets done. Solitude is such an excellent alternative to suicide. When she's alone, she's not wrong. She wants to prove to the world how beautiful it is, so she expects the world already knows this. She is that excited. Glistening grass, deer wandering by, a daylight owl. Suddenly the future opens its inevitable arms. And I read you a short one. It's called Before She Gets Into the Car. Before she gets into the car, they say how much they will miss each other and they know they probably won't. They want to hear it though. He stands and waves until she turns the corner. His white shirt gleams in morning light. 